Now, I have really enjoyed looking at the story of Mary, and um, last week, we really got this sense of how open and responsive she was to being told that a very miraculous thing was going to be happening to her, that she was conceiving a child by the Holy Spirit, and that she was going to name him Jesus. And her response to this was, after a little bit of bewilderment, just moved straight into saying, I am the Lord's servant. May it be according to your word. And she said, yes. She said, yes. Now, as our story continues, there are a couple of really wonderful things that happen that I want to make sure that we cling to because the story of Mary is so, so important to us because it's the story of this perfectly ordinary person who has an extraordinary response to God and is willing to have an amazing role in God's story unfolding. Okay, so all of this has happened to her. So just imagine, she's just figured out, oh my goodness, I'm going to carry this child named Jesus. And so what does she do? She decides to go and visit a friend. Now, this part of the story often is overlooked for me. But when she goes to meet Elizabeth and stay with her for a while, a couple of really important things happen. So let's look at this part of the story. And this is in chapter 1, verse 39. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill the promises to her. A couple of amazing things happen. Okay, Mary has just had her mind blown, remember? And then she comes to visit Elizabeth. And Elizabeth immediately confirms the prophecy that's been given to Mary. And she confirms it in all these amazing ways. For one, the baby in her womb leaps with joy, and she's able to explain that that's happening and tell Mary about it. And then she herself affirms the prophecy that has come to Mary and says, yes, this is going to happen. It is going to happen. Now, can you imagine how important this must be for Mary? That she's just had this amazing word come to her, but then to go to a friend for support and have the word confirmed, she needed this. I think there's a reason that Luke includes this in the story. When we have a sense of what God is doing in, in us, a lot of times what we need to do is go and sit with a friend and have that friend affirm, yes, I agree, that is what God is doing in your life. At the very end of our text, Um, we learn that Mary stays with Elizabeth for three months. And I think, you know, this is just a bastion of encouragement for her. So Mary was in her humanity. She needed encouragement for this undertaking that she was about to have. So it's really incredible to me that we get to see this part of the story. And I don't want it to be lost on us. Now, after Elizabeth encourages her and gives her this, the kind of confirmation of the prophecy... Then Mary herself goes into one of the most famous passages in Scripture. We call it the Magnificat, where she herself erupts into kind of praise and wonder at what God has done. Now, I I kind of like to think of this as it's almost like we're getting inside Mary's head, like we're getting to read a journal entry of hers. So we're getting to see, like, how does she respond to everything? So let's take a look. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm, He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but he has lifted up the humble. 
He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abram and to his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. So Mary, if we get into her inner world, if we read her journal, so to speak, we find that this very ordinary, very young girl, probably a teenager, um, and not a very old one at that, has this remarkable ability to have perspective, not just on what's happening to her, but on what her role in the story of God's story unfolding means. And we get to record it here. Now, at Thanksgiving, I was with my parents, and after our festivities, when it was time for bed, I went up to the guest room, and my mother had put an old journal of mine on the bed table of the time when I was about 14, 15, 13 to 15. And I, um, I, started, I read it, and it was hilarious. Um, but I also realized, wow, I'm, I'm doing this reflection on Mary here, and I've kind of got her journal entry, and then I have my own journal entry. So I bet you guys would love to hear a little bit of my inner world at about the time and age and stage of my life when I was Mary's age. I think I'm falling in love with Joel Black. <laughs> he is really cute. I talked to him a little today. He's really sweet. I hope he likes me so much. I don't know why I like him so much all of a sudden. In band, he looked at me some. I know I looked at him. I have a perfect view. It would be so perfect if he would like me. I need someone so much right now. Wouldn't it be neat? If he liked me on Valentine's, I would die. I'll just have to try real hard to be nice. Just be myself. If he doesn't like the real me, then I'll just have to get over it. My Allstate, this is like a band thing, my Allstate score was 75.1. Tracy Mullins made a 75. I bet she was real disappointed. <laughs> okay, one, okay, one more. <laughs> There's no edits. <laughs> this is not real, okay? Um, the concert was great. I felt good about it. At Pizza Hut afterward, I was drooling over Greg. I watched him play Asteroids. I think we got to know each other a lot better, you know, through my watching him play Asteroids. Um, I kind of like Bradley Hewitt. He's also in my grade. I've been depressed a lot lately. Help. I want someone to love me. I wish Kevin would write. <laughs> He's, this is the third guy. I don't know if you've, you know, in this entry, in this entry alone. Kevin. He's the one guy I will always love. Sigh. Greg is real nice. Bill doesn't like me anymore, but now he never talks to me. He's someone I can really talk to, and he won't talk to me much at all. Oh, well. I want Barry to like Ashley, too. <laughs> she would be so happy. If Greg did like me ever, Julie would kill me. There's my inner world. Aren't you inspired? <laughs> a little bit different than Mary's. Okay, a little comparison, you know, um, just for the sake of, like, doing our biblical work here. Let me get it. Um, Mary says, my soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. And I say, I think I'm falling in love with Joel Black. Um, Mary says, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. And I say, wouldn't it be really neat if he liked me on Valentine's Day? And then she says, his mercies extend to those who fear him from generation to generation. And I say, my Allstate score was a 75.1 out of, um, and Tracy Mullins made a 75. I'll bet she was real disappointed. What I like to see in looking at these two things is that my mindset was really myopic. You know, it was just swirling around whatever, whatever um, lost and longing thoughts were just coming up for me, um, and it just went from one thing to another. Whereas Mary's mindset is, she's like got her head lifted up. 
Like she sees what's happening for her, but she sees so much more. She sees her role in the bigger story of God. And, and what, I, what I realize has not changed all that much is that, that my journal entry, the content, might be a little different these days. <laughs> but a lot of times it's very myopic too. You know, it's swirling around and whatever came up. And it takes real intention for me to have the mindset of Mary, which is to lift up and see my role unfolding in the story of God. Now, Christmas offers us a wonderful time to see that and to reflect on that because we have this perfectly ordinary person who is able to recognize that she's going to be a remarkable part of God's story. And that's true for us as well. And are we able to see it? I remember when I went to college, um, you know, my role was being a college student. And in my first year of school, I, I got serious about Jesus, really got to know him more, got involved with university. And I began to see, oh, my role as a college student can actually be a part of the unfolding of God's story at James Madison University. Go Dukes. So um, I, I started to look up, you know, it, it's not just about me, but my role is in a bigger story. And so there were a number of friends that I got to, over time, talk to Jesus, talk to about Jesus. And I was just remembering, wow, um, Stephanie became a Christian. Michelle became a Christian. My friend Bruce became a Christian. And I got the joy of seeing that. You know, after those things happened, I had my own Magnificat to sing. There's so many ways that we might miss that our role is a part of the bigger story. I know one of the ways in my life more currently that that's come up is through the marriage strengthening ministry. Um, some of you, I hope, have heard about the Saturday date nights and the marriage strengthening workshops. Have, has anybody gone or heard of some of those? So, yeah, really fun, right? Well, there was a Dream Big event that we did as, as a community some years ago where we were trying to think how can we, as Central, kind of meet the needs of the people in the surrounding neighborhoods. And I remember just, I was sitting at a table in this room and thinking, okay, every day I'm working with couples as their therapists trying to kind of heal and rescue their marriage. And why, why can't we just take this on the road a little bit more? Because I know a lot of my neighbors need help in their marriages and just are really isolated in it and don't really know what to do. And so I decided, okay, I, this is something, this is a need. Maybe my role as a therapist can be a part of God's story un unfolding through Central in the way we're able to meet the needs of people in the community. Okay, so at this point, we've done a couple of date nights, and we've done five marriage strengthening workshops. And um, one of the joy joyous um, results of one of them is that some of my a, a neighbor, an old neighbor of mine, saw the date night event announced on Facebook and came to the event and then signed up for a marriage strengthening workshop and then signed up for another one. And then they, they were able to start kind of looking at and examining the stuff in their marriage in the company of friends while people were, you know, loving on them and, and being with them in the journey. And they told me that they were really on the brink, just about to separate when they saw that Facebook post. And instead of, and, and they decided, well, why not? Let's just go to this thing. And then the, strengthen, the, the marriage strengthening workshop served to be a reset for them where they really had some different tools to look at it, um, look at their marriage and their problems, and kind of start anew. You guys, when I heard that, that was a time of, like, singing my own Magnificat, right? My role is a part of God's story unfolding in these other people's lives. You know, but, but I'm just a Mary. I'm just an ordinary person sort of enabled to see that. That's what I hope for all of us, is that we're all just ordinary people, and we all have roles that have been given to us and that we've chosen, and those roles can be a part of God's story unfolding. How? I even think of this week, that all of us have a role as a, you know, a family member or a neighbor in, in the gatherings that you're going to be in. What does it look like for your role to be a part of God's story unfolding this week? You know, as a community, we're facing all this transition 
Pastor John is retiring next summer. Mandy is leaving us at the end of the month. Um, I mean, not leaving, leaving her role. <laughs> um, but, but we are going to have an interim pastor, and that might happen fairly quickly, or it might take a while, and then there'll be a search for a head pastor, and that might be quick, or it might take a, a really long time. It's tempting. We could think, oh, let's just hang out and wait for all that to get resolved before we figure out what Central's going to be. I think, I don't want to wait. I don't want to wait. Central and the ministry of this church is a part of God's kingdom unfolding in this community, in this neighborhood. And there might be people here who, who have kind of an inkling that something's stirring about your own role and you want to try something new, but you might have this sense like, oh, somebody else will do it. You know, I got an email just this week from somebody who had been in the marriage strengthening workshop saying, hey, why don't we do something like this um, for parenting? Oh my gosh, if we did something, something like this for parenting, I'm sure we would be just overwhelmed with people um, coming and, and wanting that service. I've had somebody else reach out to me, why don't, why don't we do something like this for single people? And I'm like, yeah, okay, well, I can't do it all, <laughs> right? This is, this is not all mine to do. But I can imagine coaching someone doing it, right? So I don't know, what's, what's stirring in all of you? You know, how are your roles perhaps a part of God's kingdom unfolding in ways you haven't considered? I'd like for all of us to leave with kind of a thought or an idea about how to, to take the next step with this. And so what I'm hoping is that um, everybody would would um, set up a time to reflect. I always like to do a, a reflection in the new year, you know, looking back on the previous year and looking ahead for the, for the future. I do this with friends. And I would love to encourage everybody to do that. And in this time, I want you to consider your roles and then listen to God. Consider the roles in your life and then listen to God about it. What's stirring what is God nudging you around? What ideas just spontaneously come to mind? Write them down. Consider them. Hold them. Weigh them. And then, I'd love for everyone here, and I would love it if you set this up before you even leave today, to set up an Elizabeth time. Okay, what did Elizabeth do for Mary? Elizabeth was wonderful in that she confirmed what Mary felt like she was hearing from God. She said, yes, I attest, it's true, I see it. We all need an Elizabeth in our lives to listen to what we feel like is coming up for us from God and then to affirm, yes, I think so too. And so I would love it if, you know, there, you might have a friend who's here this morning. You can say, you can tap that person and say, will you be my Elizabeth? And let's set that up for January. You see, Mary was so ordinary, but her response to God was so extraordinary. We can be extraordinary like that too in our response to God. A lot of times it just means making space for it and noticing what God's raising. There's nothing all that special about Mary. She's just a young girl who had a heart open to God. We can be a part of God's story unfolding, and it can be so exciting so that we're singing our own Magnificat. And I would love it to be so.